Hello. Yeah, I was just sitting here and, uh, I don't know, woke up a little while ago and I was thinking about things. And I see I got my big scary voice going on. That's some scary shit, isn't it? And <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, there's this thing called dissociation that uh, people do with this disease. And uh, before I adapted to it, uh, my left leg was uh, so bad that uh, I didn't want anything to do with the part of my body. I didn't want anything to do with uh, my left foot and uh, my left leg below the knee. Didn't want to wash it. Didn't want to touch it. Didn't want to do anything at all with it. I just wanted to, and I understand, you know, why a lot of people that have this disease, uh, they get, they, uh, get a body part amputated because, uh, you know, if amputation is your option for dealing with pain, that's one thing, you know, <laughs> but really I think w w the why people would do that and doctors would humor people and, you know, chop off their foot or their, their leg, uh, because, you know, they just want to help them to survive. And if, if, if <laughs> anyways, I don't know. You know, uh, maybe this one should be scripted because this, this is kind of foggy stuff here. But anyway, the point is, uh, people that have this, they'll, they'll actually, in the past anyway, would uh, uh, get an amputation with an affected limb. And uh, <laughs> uh, I think mostly it's not the pain or that they think that that would solve the pain or anything like that. It's just, they got to... They just want to be dissociated from it. And what better way to be dissociated from uh, a painful diseased limb than to just get, get rid of it, just get it cut off. So, um, um, so that's, now I was thinking about the way I deal with life and you know, how I'm such a, such a weirdo and whatever. And I think because I have it, uh, throughout my whole body, you know, basically from, from here down, your chest down, um, like uh, the dissociation thing, um, just makes me live in my head. You know, if it was up to me, I wouldn't even eat. You know, I wouldn't eat. You know, I would just live in my head completely because uh, why in the hell would I want to live in my body? <laughs> why would I want to live in a body that's uh, torturing? I can't. You know, I can't get an amputation from here down. Right, I don't think you can. I don't think that works out too good. So uh, that is my amputation. That is my amputation. Is uh, uh, just living in my head, and you know, just a big fuck you to my body. Um, that makes it really hard to take care of your body too. You know, uh, like you're supposed to. I was looking at a video I made uh, of uh, demography that's in another account. Uh, Joe Johnson. I'm like, look at that healthy motherfucker. You know, man, I look healthy and everything. And this, this was only like four months ago. And I said, I said in this other video that uh, you do not tread water with CRPS. You fight, you fight or you lose. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not a computer guy, so I don't really know how to come put that video on this account. And I think I deleted it or something. It's not on my computer anymore. So I don't, you know, I, I don't know how to do that. Uh, to compare me now, you know, looking like the Grim Reaper to me then where, you know, uh, people was, uh, you know, I got like uh, personal meshes and stuff saying, like, ooh, you sexy baby and all that shit. You know, the few people that saw it. So, I'm sure as hell don't feel that way now. But anyways, uh, yeah, and then there's the uh, emotional aspect, like, uh, that your emotions are tied into your autonomic system in a, in a way that I, I really don't understand, but I have to keep everything on an even keel. I can't go around getting uh, upset all the time. I mean, that's not good. Not good. I can't really explain that, but you know, I don't know if I put this up or not. I mean, it, it's some pretty tough stuff. You know, it's, it's just a consequence of, uh, having such a different body than everyone else and you know i think i think a lot of what i do with the uh, uh, metaphor and um 
trying to it's it's just trying to explain myself you know it's just trying to explain uh, my experience and how different it is to people and the only way I can do that is with words and uh, and it, not not words like the notive words like uh, this is this is this it has to be it's so out there that I need that metaphorical link between uh, what I'm experiencing living in this body and, and what's your experience living in yours I mean you can't explain living like this or, or having a body like this to anybody so uh metaphor is really my only option so I, I don't know i was writing something peculiar last night about a skunk and a hedge and a cat you know and uh, I, I i usually don't do that because it just kind of ruins the point of metaphor if you just spell it out for people you know so but i you know i spe spelled it out that i'm not really talking about a skunk and a cat in a hedge because you know i have this story where i was passing papers as a young man and there's a hole and there's a hole in this hedge that's man shaped and i used to cut through it you know and i'm passing papers and it's really dark out and there's a lot of cats in the neighborhood and i think there's a cat in, in blocking my way in front of this hedge and uh you know so i'm like get out of the way kitty this thing don't move so i just reach out and hit it with the side of my foot not even a real kick because I'm not a mean person I just kind of like push it out of the way with my foot so I can walk through this hole in the hedge and I turn around and look at this cat and it's spinning around and stomping its feet and its tails twitching and shit and I'm like oh that ain't no cat bro that's a skunk you know and I took off and did my version of running through the through the hedge but I still got blasted but I didn't get it full force you know I didn't have to sleep in the garage or anything so, you know, I told that story uh, last night and uh, said that story is not really about a cat and a skunk. It's about I had a preconceived notion in my head that that's a skunk, you know. So the reality did not match my idea of what was going on. And it screwed me up and got me sprayed by a skunk. And we, you know, we suffer through that in our very, in our daily lives all the time we have these preconceived notions in our head and we're not open to the reality that's in front of us and uh, we have ideas about things that are you know put into us from the outside and we should be experiencing life from the inside and what's really going on and what's really happening and as far as that how that relates to uh, the phenomenon of religion and um, how people adopt other people's ideas and then you know, they got these ideas going on, you know, these uh, cats from thousands of years ago and uh, that they're keeping them to recognize, keeping them from recognizing the reality of the of the skunk in their face. <laughs> so, <laughs> Anyways, you know, half the time when I do that shit, I'm not even aware of it. It's just the you know, when I when I write something like that or, or say something like that, I'm not even aware of what I'm doing, you know, but it is what I'm doing. It's just I think it's just a consequence of uh, the CRPS and having a, a body that just so out there that you're like an alien and you have to use that metaphorical link. You know, you have to say crazy shit like, you know, your body's being roasted by invisible Apaches to help people understand what's going on with you, you know, so. I mean, I, hopefully it helps me as a writer. I can uh, get something out of it because, boy, it is a bitch. It ain't easy waking up in the morning. It's like last night I stayed up till I was ready to go to sleep. And I stayed up like four hours past my bedtime because I'm, I know when I go to sleep, I'm going to have to wake up and I'm going to have to, you know, reacquaint myself with the notion of having an incurable disease and a body that don't work. And that's my morning ritual, you know, is to say, well, you know, this is me. This is what I got to deal with. Uh, uh, you know, hopefully I can shit today and hopefully I can, uh, my body will work like it's supposed to. Uh, it doesn't usually do that, but, you know, you never know. And that's how I have to start my day. And, you know, I don't feel too great in the morning anyway, regardless. Um, but, yeah, you know, uh I don't know, I, I, I shouldn't just hit, ramble on here, you know, and uh, try people's patience. So I just wanted to, I was just thinking about the whole dissociation thing, which I've really never read up on or anything like that ex extensively, but I certainly understand it.
you know, when I was, I wouldn't even wash my own foot. <laughs> I didn't want to touch it. I didn't want to even own that it was mine. I wanted it gone, you know. And uh, what I was thinking about, uh, you know, my sister asking me uh, why you don't kill yourself, speaking of wanting things gone, if you, you know, your whole body's affected like that, you're like, you know, why you keep going or why you stay alive. And uh, sometimes I just don't know. You know, I'm not depressed or anything like that, particularly. I'm actually doing a little better now, even though I'm still not taking care of myself, but I'm doing a little better. I'm not using my body for an ashtray the last couple of days. And, uh, well, I have a friend that had, uh, was a drunk that uh, quit drinking for, for a week, and it was kind of nice to see him, uh, you know, see his old self before the alcohol got him. Uh, Cause he's such a bright guy, and uh, you know that's kind of uplifting. Um, yeah, why I stay alive or why I keep going? I'm not afraid to die. You know, I'm I'm afraid of I'm not afraid of the death part of dying. That doesn't really bother me at all. Uh, I don't want to leave things undone, and I don't want to um, leave people in my life. Um, defend for themselves without me. I mean, I guess I, I guess it's ego. <laughs> I guess I guess I stay alive because of ego because I think I'm valuable in some way. You know, like I was saying again, you know, on, on my daily writings on it on it on that video is uh uh I, if I didn't have a big ego, I'm not gonna survive. So, you know, I have to excuse the fact that I'm, you know, somewhat arrogant and have that big ego because without it, I'm not here, you know, uh, not, you know, not having any kind of normal life and having to live, live in a twisted, diseased body. Uh, you better have, you better have some kind of ego. You're not going to make it, you know, and I've lived like this for almost 30 years. I don't even fucking know how, you know, I don't have a clue, uh, but I keep going. And, uh, you know, I got, I got people in my life that need help right now. And I don't, I don't know. I didn't really want to do this. I mean, but you know, that's, that's why, uh, put, I'm going to put part of the, this novel I wrote, you know, just because I don't have any money, which for me, that doesn't matter, but, uh, my family needs help right now. So I thought you, you, you know, you're not going to find out unless you put yourself out there. If you do have any value or if you're just, uh, fucking kidding yourself about it if if what I do or what I'm able to do has any value uh, with words um, and if you don't put it out there you know and I sat on that now I deliberately wrote the novel uh, set in the past so you know I didn't set it in in the now especially with the way technology changes and everything I wrote this other thing where I set it in the now uh, and it's only it's only wrote it like 10 years ago and now it's like oh, I gotta rewrite half of this shit you know the way technology keeps changing and people and all their fancy toys and shit so the first novel I wrote I was actually pretty smart about it. and I was like you know what I don't know what I'm gonna do with this but I'm gonna put whatever effort I can into this so I'm gonna use uh, the setting of um, you know a past time where I don't have to worry about technology changing and don't have to worry about how the world changes nowadays because what I deal with in what I'm writing is uh, these are things that don't change. These are things that are, are uh, existential dilemmas that people have. Who am I? What am I? Why am I here? Stuff like that. You know, it's uh, it's stuff that doesn't change. And um, so, anyways, it, so that's what you know. It's, I'm 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 at the point where it's like uh, you're you're. I don't want to feel that way, but it is, it's a cry for help, you know, I don't want it to be that way, but it is what it is, you know, I'm human, and uh, it's, it's been 30 years like this, living in poverty, poverty and disease and whatnot, so, you know, I, and I, I was planning on uh, trying to do the writing thing, uh, you know, years and years ago, but uh, something happened to me about 10 years ago that disrupted the whole course of uh, my life and uh, everything kind of, you know, went down the drain because of it, but I'm not going to talk about that now.
that's no way to start your day talking about that kind of stuff. I got a whole day ahead of me. Uh, uh, you know, I'll work on the book some more and try to get my audio book done. I figured I'll put it out there. If it's any good, it, you know, it'll catch on. Your pe people will respond to it if it's any good. If it's not any good, I mean, it's it'll be out there for people to read or reject. So, or listen to or reject. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to. Yeah, it, it's it's tough, you know, with an unscripted thing like this. But I, I prefer that, you know, I, you, something good might come out of me in a spontaneous way, or something interesting. And uh, whenever I'm working with words, I don't like to. Like I tried to plot a novel before, and I was like, you know what? That's just not the way to go. And I read. Uh, other writers uh, books about it about writing and they're like that's that can hamstring you it's like uh, you're set you're putting yourself in a box if you write this outline and you're like well I want this to happen I want that yeah just let whatever happens happens you don't you know sometimes it's freaks you out what comes out of you like uh, like ooh. especially someone that's a twisted fuck like me it's like uh, wow like I <laughs> But you, you, it's kind of a, a submission type of thing. It's like you submit to the process, and whatever comes out of you comes out of you, you know. And a lot of times it's not pleasant, and it's it's you know, it, it it's interesting to to uh, uh like purge yourself on paper, and then to try to make it into uh, something that has a plot, and that has uh, a theme to it. You know, it's, it, it, it's not, it, it makes it sound like you're just vomiting or something on, on a page, but you're not, you're just, you're getting stuff out of yourself and, and, and you're, if you're not emotionally involved in what you're doing, it's, it's going to be, you're, you're jerking off. It's a waste of time anyway. So it's kind of like a purging process and, but it's like, uh, <laughs> it's like a Jackson Pollock painting. <laughs> this stuff comes out of you. And you got to rearrange it, though. You know, I don't know that much about what Pollock did, but I, just the image I had in my head, the stuff comes out of you, but you you, you rearrange it into something. You're just not, like, uh, doing a dear diary type of thing, you know. Uh, you're you're emoting on paper, but uh, uh, you're constructing something, you know. A lot of times it's, it's tough because uh, you have pieces of stuff that uh, it doesn't fit. It doesn't work and it's like well this was important to me when I was writing it and then you know you have to have the abortionist eye to, and you have to abort what you gave birth to and uh, like you know you know what this might be interesting but it just does it's not part of the deal it's not part of the story I don't know what this is about or why I sat down and, and spewed this onto the page but yeah anyways I, I don't know I don't know if this is interesting for people or whatever that I'm just sitting here rambling drinking my morning coffee <clears throat> oh, I don't know but um, yeah I had to read up on a dissociation thing because that's really why I put this other video on here or made this video is uh, I was thinking about the dissociation thing and um, and uh, how things were when I first was adapting you know I can touch my foot now you know, I can say well that's my foot I don't like I still don't like the motherfucker but you know it's a lot better than not having a foot. It's uh, so yeah. It's a difficult way to, for anybody to start their day with these kind of thoughts, and um, you know, start start your day thinking about how um, you don't want to live in your body. And I'm, I'm not aware that we have any options other than living in our bodies. So, you know, <laughs> there was another option. You know, download me into a, a machine, download my consciousness into something that doesn't hurt. So I'm really actually a pretty uh, a content, mellow person. It's just I have a body that tortures me constantly. I mean, I don't know what I would be like now if I had a healthy body. When I had a healthy body, man, I was just a miserable fucking wretched person uh, just a ner bundle of nerves and insecurity and self-hatred and all that stuff and I'm not like that now I just have a tortured messed up body 
but if I have moments or I have days where I'm just, you know, my body's not hurting me too bad and I'm not being tortured, uh, I'm content to just sit and be me. And that's a valuable thing, man. Uh, you know, today's not shaping up too good health wise, but uh, I can move around and I'll find something to do. Keep myself occupied and later on I'll try to read. I, this is helping my voice loosen up a little bit, you know, because whenever I start out the day, man, I get that foghorn thing going on. And it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my voice is a little bit more normal now, even just through the course of the vid of uh, this video talking. Yeah, that's about 20 minutes of rambling bullshit. Uh, I certainly don't. If you hung with me for the 20 minutes, thank you very much. I'll talk to you next time.